In this lecture, we'll talk about right triangle trigonometry. Before we can talk about right triangle trigonometry, we have to review some things about right triangles. So, by definition, a triangle that has a right angle is a right triangle. The side that is opposite the right angle, which is the longest side of the triangle, is called the hypotenuse, and the other sides are called legs. So in this figure, we have a triangle with a right angle, side C is our hypotenuse, and sides A and B are legs. And recall from geometry the Pythagorean theorem that says in a right triangle, the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the legs. So C squared equals A squared plus B squared. We'll use this theorem quite a bit in this section. So let's talk about the trigonometric functions related to the right triangle. To remember the trig functions, you can think about the chant SOHCAHTOA, S-O-H-C-A-H-T-O-A. And SOHCAHTOA should help you remember that sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So S-O-H is SO. Cosine of theta equals the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. C-A-H is CA. And tangent of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, so that gives us the TOA. We also have the trigonometric functions cosecant, which is the reciprocal of sine, so that's hypotenuse over opposite. Secant, which is the reciprocal of cosine, is hypotenuse over adjacent. And cotangent, the reciprocal of tangent, is adjacent over opposite. So let's do an example where we want to find the six trigonometric functions for the given triangle. We have a right triangle with legs of value of lengths 3 and 3, and we want to use this to find all of the trig functions for the given angle theta. The first thing that we need to do is use the Pythagorean theorem to find out what is the third side of our triangle. So c squared equals a squared plus b squared. If we plug in the lengths of our legs, that gives us c squared equals 3 squared plus 3 squared. So c squared is 9 plus 9, which is 18. We take the square root of both sides to give us c equals the square root of 18. We can write 18 as the product of 9 times 2. And since 9 is a perfect square, we can remove it from the square root sign, giving us 3 times the square root of 2. So the hypotenuse has length 3 times the square root of 2. Now that we know what all three sides of our triangle are, let's find our trig identities. We'll start with sine of theta. Since sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse, that's going to give us 3 divided by 3 times the square root of 2. The 3's will cancel out, giving us 1 divided by the square root of 2. And usually we don't like to see radicals in the denominator, so we need to rationalize this. If we rationalize by multiplying both the numerator and denominator by the square root of 2, that'll give us the square root of 2 over 2. The cosine of theta is going to be the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse, which is also 3 divided by 3 root 2. Again, the 3's cancel out, giving us 1 divided by root 2. And if we rationalize by multiplying both numerator and denominator by root 2, we'll get root 2 over 2. The tangent of theta is the opposite over adjacent, so that'll be 3 divided by 3, so the tangent of theta is equal to 1. The cosecant of theta is equal to the hypotenuse over the opposite side, so that's 3 times the square root of 2 divided by 3. The 3's cancel out, leaving us with the square root of 2, so cosecant theta is root 2. Secant of theta is hypotenuse over adjacent, so that's 3 times the square root of 2 over 3. Again, the 3's cancel out, leaving us with just root 2. And the cotangent of theta is going to be adjacent over opposite, which will be 3 over 3, so the cotangent of theta is equal to 1. Let's look at another example. This time we have a right triangle with legs of 2 and the square root of 3. So again we start with the Pythagorean theorem to find the third side, c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So c squared equals the square root of 3 squared plus 2 squared. So c squared equals 3 plus 4, which is 7. And if we take the square root of both sides, we get that the length of the hypotenuse is the square root of 7. So now that we know all three sides, we can start finding our trig, trig function values. So sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, which is 2 divided by the square root of 7. If we rationalize by multiplying both the top and bottom by root 7, that'll give us 2 root 7 over 7. Cosine of theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse which will be the square root of 3 over the square root of 7. And if we rationalize that, that'll give us the square root of 21 over 7. The tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent, which will be 2 divided by the square root of 3. And if we rationalize that, that'll give us 2 times the square root of 3 over 3.
The cosecant of theta is the hypotenuse over the opposite side, which gives us the square root of 7 over 2. The secant of theta will be the hypotenuse over the adjacent side, which will be the square root of 7 divided by the square root of 3, and if we rationalize that, that gives us the square root of 21 over 3. And finally, the cotangent of theta is the adjacent over the opposite side, which will be the square root of 3 over 2. Another way that we can find our trigonometric function values is by using some fundamental identities. So the first set of identities are the reciprocal identities. We've already talked about these a little bit. That says that the cosecant of theta is the reciprocal of sine of theta, the secant of theta is the reciprocal of cosine of theta, and the cotangent of theta is the reciprocal of tangent theta. So if you know the values of one, you can find the other using the reciprocal. Next, we have the quotient identities. This tells us that tangent of theta is equal to sine over cosine. And since cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, cotangent of theta will be the cosine of theta over the sine of theta. And finally, we have the Pythagorean identities, which says that sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta equals 1, tangent squared of theta plus 1 equals secant squared of theta, and 1 plus the cotangent squared of theta equals the cosecant squared of theta. So as an example, we can use these identities to find the other trig function values if we're given values of some of the functions. So if sine of theta is 1 third and cosine of theta is 2 root 2 over 3, we should be able to use the identities to find the other four functions. So let's start by finding secant of theta. From the reciprocal identity, we know that secant of theta is 1 over cosine theta, so that'll be 1 divided by 2 root 2 over 3. If we take the reciprocal of 2 root 2 over 3, that'll be 3 over 2 root 2. And if we rationalize this to get the radical out of the denominator, multiplying both the top and bottom by the square root of 2, we'll get 3 root 2 over 4. Next, let's find the cosecant of theta. So from the reciprocal identity, we know that cosecant theta is 1 over sine theta, so that's 1 divided by 1 third, which simplifies just to be 3. Next, we have the tangent of theta. Using the quotient identity, we know tangent of theta is sine of theta over cosine of theta. So that's 1 third divided by 2 root 2 over 3. Remember, to divide fractions, we multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. So we have 1 third times 3 over 2 root 2. If we multiply across and cancel out our 3's, we'll get 1 divided by 2 root 2. And if we rationalize to get the radical out of the denominator, we'll get root 2 over 4. And finally, we can find the cotangent of theta. Using the reciprocal property, we know that cotangent of theta is 1 over tangent of theta. So that's 1 over root 2 over 4. When we take that reciprocal, we get 4 over the square root of 2. If we rationalize the denominator by multiplying the top and bottom by root 2, we'll get 4 root 2 over 2. And then we reduce the fraction. 4 over 2 gives us 2, so this will be 2 times the square root of 2. All right, so now that we've talked about our trig functions, we should be able to find all of the trig function values if we're given just one of them. And there are two ways that we can approach this. The first way is that we can use the known trig function value to draw a corresponding triangle and then use that triangle to find the other trig functions, or we can use trigonometric identities. Let's do an example of each. So let's find all of the trig function values if we're given that cosine of theta is equal to 1 over 3. For this example, we'll use the triangle method. So cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. And since our value is 1 over 3, we can conclude that the adjacent is 1 and the hypotenuse is 3. So we can use that to sketch a triangle that has a leg of 1 as our adjacent leg and a hypotenuse of 3. We'll use the Pythagorean theorem to find the third side. So if we plug in what we know, we get 3 squared equals 1 squared plus b squared. If we simplify that, we get 9 equals 1 plus b squared. Subtracting 1 from both sides gives us b squared equals 8. And if we take the square root of both sides, we'll get b equals the square root of 8, which simplifies to be 2 times the square root of 2. So the other leg, the opposite side, will be 2 root 2. So now that we know all the sides of our triangle, we could find our trig functions. Sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, which gives us 2 root 2 over 3. Cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 1 third, as we were given. Tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent, so that'll be 2 root 2 over 1, or just 2 root 2. Cosecant of theta is hypotenuse over opposite, so that's 3 divided by 2 root 2. 
which if we rationalize by multiplying the top and bottom by root 2, we'll get 3 root 2 over 4. Secant of theta is equal to the hypotenuse divided by the adjacent, which gives us 3 over 1, or just 3. And finally, cotangent of theta is adjacent over opposite, which gives us 1 divided by 2 root 2. And if we rationalize that, we'll get root 2 over 4. So let's look at another example. This time we want to find all trig function values if we're given that the cotangent of theta equals 1 half. And this time we're going to use the identities to figure out the different values. So let's start by finding the tangent of theta. We know from the reciprocal identity tangent of theta equals 1 over cotangent theta. And so the reciprocal of 1 half would be 2, so tangent of theta equals 2. All right, now that we know tangent and cotangent, let's look for cosecant. So cosecant of theta can be found using the Pythagorean identity. Cotangent of theta squared plus 1 equals cosecant of theta squared. If we plug in the value of cotangent, that gives us 1 half squared plus 1 equals cosecant squared theta. Evaluate 1 half squared gives us 1 fourth plus 1 equals cosecant squared theta. We'll rewrite 1 as 4 over 4, and then add them together to give us 5 fourths equals cosecant squared theta. If we take the square root of both sides, we'll get cosecant of theta equals the square root of 5 over 4, which simplifies to be the square root of 5 over 2. All right, so now that we know what cosecant of theta is, we can find sine of theta by using the reciprocal property. Since sine of theta and cosecant of theta are reciprocals, we know sine of theta should be 1 over root 5 divided by 2. If we take that reciprocal, that gives us 2 divided by the square root of 5. And if we rationalize the denominator, that'll give us 2 root 5 over 5. All right, next we're going to find secant of theta. And again, we're going to use one of our Pythagorean identities. We're going to use 1 plus tangent squared equals secant squared theta. Plug in 2 for tangent. That gives us 1 plus 2 squared equals secant squared of theta. If we simplify the left-hand side, that gives us 5 equals secant squared theta. And if we take the square root of both sides, we'll see that secant of theta is equal to the square root of 5. So our last trig function is the cosine of theta, which we know as the reciprocal of secant. So cosine of theta should equal 1 over the square root of 5, which, if we rationalize, gives us the square root of 5 over 5. In addition to our basic trigonometric identities, another useful tool that we can use when evaluating trig values is the complementary angle theorem, which says that co-functions of complementary angles are equal. So the co-functions are the trig functions that are paired together in the Pythagorean identity. The sine goes with cosine, tangent goes with cotangent, and secant goes with cosecant. Remember, two angles that are complementary are ones that add, to give, add together to give you a total of 90. So sine of theta equals cosine of 90 minus theta. Cosine of theta equals sine of 90 minus theta. Tangent of theta equals cotangent of 90 minus theta. Cotangent of theta equals tangent of 90 minus theta. Secant of theta equals cosecant of 90 minus theta. And cosecant of theta equals secant of 90 minus theta. And the same is true if we look at it in radian mode, where instead of 90 degrees, we think of it as pi over 2. Now let's use some identities or the complementary angle theorem to evaluate some trigonometric expressions. So for our first example, we want to determine the secant squared of 28 degrees minus the tangent squared of 28 degrees. And we want to try to do this without a calculator. So since our expression has both secant squared and tangent squared in it, let's consider the Pythagorean identity tangent squared of theta plus 1 equals secant squared of theta. If I subtract tangent squared from both sides, I get secant squared of theta minus tangent squared of theta equals 1. And notice the problem I'm looking at takes this exact form, secant squared of 28 minus tangent squared of 28. So using that Pythagorean identity, we know that secant squared of 28 degrees minus tangent squared of 28 degrees equals 1. For our next example, let's consider cotangent of 25 minus the cosine of 25 divided by the sine of 25. So for this one, we're going to use a quotient identity. Remember, cotangent of theta is defined to be cosine of theta over sine of theta. So using that, we can rewrite cosine of 25 degrees divided by sine of 25 degrees as cotangent of 25 degrees. And cotangent of 25 minus the cotangent of 25 gives us 0. And for our last example, let's consider the secant of 35 times the cosecant of 55 minus the tangent of 35 times the cotangent of 55. 
Now notice that 35 degrees and 55 degrees, if I add them together, that'll give us 90 degrees. So those two angles are complementary. So we can use the complementary angle theorem to rewrite this. And it doesn't really matter which way we go, but I'm going to take the 55 degree angles and rewrite them with the cofunctions and a 35 degree angle. So cosecant of 55 is the same as secant of 35. And cotangent of 55 is the same thing as tangent of 35. So basically what we have now is secant squared of 35 degrees minus tangent squared of 35 degrees. And just like in our first example, that'll simplify to be 1 based on the Pythagorean identity.